Hey everyone, this is uh, Aiden Garazio. I hope everyone is having a great evening. I just wanted to do a quick little video. I want to go over a couple of points that I've written down here on a piece of paper and kind of share you my thoughts for this uh, episode. What it kind of comes down to is I want to talk a little bit about how I deal with acquiring knowledge and applying that to further understand my design capabilities and, um, and knowledge base um, because there are a lot of different ways to go about it and I kind of wanted to use this episode to kind of highlight and showcase how exactly I would do that and try to communicate it a little bit easier or in a way that makes it easier for you to understand so hopefully you guys can get a little bit of value out of it that would be amazing so that is my goal for tonight I just you know want to cover a couple of points so the first point that I wrote down is a way of thinking. And what I kind of mean with a way of thinking is I would have to preface this that what I'm talking about is realistic type of design. So if you guys are familiar with the work I do, I will be talking towards that industry and that niche, so to speak, that, that form of expertise. So what I mean with a way of thinking I think it is important for every designer to adapt a certain way of thinking that allows them to see solutions in everything. And I think part of it is is kind of transforming the way you're you've been taught to think and to really learn yourself and teach yourself to look at the world through a kind of lens that is prone to be in a very curious state all the time, to look for answers all the time and also be able to cross-reference information from different fields in order to create new pathways and neurons to generate new solutions for things. And I'll, I'll address that in a later point in a couple of minutes, but that's basically what I mean with a different kind of thinking, which is more prone to a designer-esque uh, perspective and protocols that a person might have in his brain, uh, whatever problem he may come across in his life and his daily life doesn't matter if it's a problem with a bicycle or um, someone you're observing down the street having uh, some kind of issue how will your brain process this will it just like take in the information and store it and process it and it goes into the subconscious and uh, gets deleted later on or would you observe it in a way which makes you inquisitive of what's going on and how your mind reacts to seeing faults and seeing problems. Does it automatically shift into a problem-solving state and kind of readiness? And I think this can be taught in a, in a sense. I think through repetition and making it a habit of being in such a mind state all the time. So that is definitely something I like and recommend. But I do think it is easier for those who have the, you know, the inquisitive personality trait to begin with. So that is something interesting for sure. The next point I wanted to address is understanding of research and crystallizing. So one thing that I find very important, something that I see happen all the time is people, you know, they're working with like three monitors, um, having all kinds of shit open, you know, while they work with a tablet. And, and that's just crazy to me because to me it looks like someone needs constant visual aid uh, when they're trying to establish or materialize uh, some type of solution on, on, on their screen. And I think that's like a faulty way of doing things because to me, this is the exact same as taking an exam with a cheat sheet on the side. So would you actually learn anything from that? I don't think so. The way I believe you can manifest true understanding of a subject is to truly be fascinated by the subject in the first place. And there are you know, many different ways of how to get yourself excited about something, uh, which I will not, will not go into right now, but I think what is highly important is that you first have to begin from a state of true curiosity. If you are truly inquisitive and curious about a certain subject, your natural behavior will be in such a way that you will already be searching about it, reading about it, in a very obsessive way until you have all the answers and probably you'll never uh, you'll never will have all the answers so it leaves you with an unquenched uh, thirst 
of, of information, which people who tend to work like this often have, and people who tend to have this kind of personality often have. So to get back to my point is understanding something comes from truly absorbing as much information as possible. So for example, if you want to know how a fighter jet is made, instead of a concept artist going to Google, searching like a bunch of different jets from different countries, from different uh, whatever, and mixing them all up because he, he likes an, uh, an element here and he likes an element there and bashing them all together mindlessly or only maybe on a visual aesthetic basis, even though the visual result may be a good job if the artist is a you know has a proper skill to manifest and merge things together in a nice way quali qualitatively the design fundamentally will be a flawed design to begin with because the whole process has been done in an improper way so how would i address this and how will i go about crystallizing the knowledge how do you actually do that in my mind, and in my opinion, and this is like how I've been working forever, is I was really into guns. And I loved guns so much. And even when I was like in, in, in middle school, I was drawing them on the paper, etc. And I was doing all kinds of things. And it was, it was kind of crazy. I tried to look to the reference and then memorizing it. And I was, I was working when I was 10 years old, like the concept artist drawing direct reference from his two fancy monitors. But what I found is the correct way is to actually do proper ac academic level research, find out what is a firearm, how does it work, how are they manufactured, from what materials, by what kind of people, in what time frame, follow, you know, the, the, how do they make the tooling to make the rifle, how do they do this, how do they uh, source the material, you know, um, how does the material gets uh, gets delivered? What kind of people work in the factory? What kind of quality control gets done? What kind of coding is this? Why is the coding applied? Uh, why does it have this kind of grip and not another grip? So you would, I would go and do, you know, countless hours of research and looking at videos of people disassembling and assembling guns. I would look at sh uh, shooting videos of uh, sports shooters like doing their thing to see how it how it looks in motion how it works in context these are so important because if a single image provides you with a thousand words what does 12 hours of video offer it offers an immense amount of information that you store and the more you watch it the more your true fundamental understanding increases of a certain subject the more you eliminate the need for a screen next to you. I only work with one monitor because I know for my head how a complete AK-47 works. I know how many rifles work inside uh, because there are a couple of principles on how internals work and you can kind of find out yourself basically looking at a pistol, not even taking it apart, what, what, what the parts inside are because you know how pistols work. You know what kind of, is it a slide fire pistol? Is it a striker fired pistol? Is it a hammer uh, single action, double action? It, is it a revolver? Is it a muzzle loader? So it's not that complicated to really get down the knowledge into your system so you really have a true understanding of what is what. And the way you crystallize it is actually applying all the research you've done here and accessing it from your mental archive to create a solution for yourself and constantly checking back and forth hey have i implemented this correctly but not with a screen on the side this is not needed what i believe is that through crystallized knowledge you can have amazing results and the beautiful thing about this is once you've done research for a couple of items that you find really interesting this might be race cars whatever these might be like fighter jets these might be like transport things medical equipment and like military tech you can like draw information from all of these sources that you've coherently studied like i mentioned here and when you have to make a new solution 
you can draw from all of these pools of knowledge that each have their own backstory, their own expertise, their own uh, science, their own uh, manufacturing processes and coatings and materials and, and philosophies. So once you increase the web of information that you've crystallized in your brain, it'll be amazing. So you'll have the tools at your disposal in a way that is so deeply embedded in your brain that you, you, you'll you never need reference again, you know? So the beautiful thing about red dots, for example, is you have many red dots on the market, but they all work on the same principle. I mean, if we're talking about reflex sites, it's basically an emitter that, you know, emits light to the glass and it reflects back to the to the human's eye and you can see like a reticle in the scope. That's all it is. So once you learn this information about red dot sites and how they work, you can even order one from eBay so you can take a look at it yourself, really truly understand how big are they actually. Order an airsoft rifle or whatever so you know like, hey, how, how thin are they? Weapons are pretty thin to be honest. How heavy are they normally? How high are the sights above the barrel? Does it have effect on the, on the optic height? Does it have effect on recoil? Where's the center of, of mass? Um, all of these things you can observe in person by simply spending a little bit of R&D money ordering a red dot sight, for example, under truly understanding what it is that you're holding in your hands, how it's built, how they put all the markings on there, what the stickers say, and everything will be relevant to the product. So once you do that, once you adopt this kind of mindset of acquiring information in a very thorough and fundamental way, if you can kind of adhere to this protocol for everything else in your life or in, in, de, in your design field or in your VFX field or any field you're in, if you apply the same kind of protocol, I believe you can become much more successful in expanding your mental uh, visual library, create many new pathways for potential problem solving connections that can be made in the brain to have much better results in your work and eliminate the need for reference screens all the time. So that is kind of what is on my mind and that is how I would think I would describe my process. So just to give you another example, if I clean up this place here, how do we mix from two industries, for example? Well, I'll give you an example. So I have a mentorship, a, a personal design class that I give to a one person. I mean, each class is for one person only. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. And basically, I, I was talking to a student of mine, and, um, and then we were talking about this mixing up of ideas. And just to showcase him and give him an, an, an example of what something like, you know, how something like that would look like, I just mentioned, um, let's take technology from two fields. So we have nature, and then we have like man-made. How are we going to combine things? So I came up with a kind of cool idea, and I was like, do you know geckos, you know, the little creatures who can walk on any surface, right, with the special patterns on their fingers? How, why don't we mix that with like a grenade and make like a very cool gecko grenade, uh, Semtex tech. So you can throw it on a wall and it'll stick because of the a special pattern. So such an easy mix up already makes for like a super sick design brief. So how would you approach this design brief? Well, First of all, you are going to learn everything about grenades. I want you to know how it's made, why it's made, by who it's made, for who it's made, how much it costs to make, what kind of versions there are, how, when, it, when it was invented. I want you to know everything about grenades that you can possibly find to really deeply root the knowledge about grenades in your system because that means you have all kinds of different grenades. You have flashbangs, you have concussion grenades, frag grenades, etc., etc. And then you have a couple of uh, variants in, in geckos, in, in, you know, in its species. And you're going to do research on what kind of pattern do they have? Like, how does it actually work? You go to YouTube, you go research. Um, did they do any slow mo footage of how they actually attach the surfaces and how do they deal with oily surfaces and how do they deal with? asphalt or wood what makes it that their pattern grip pattern can attach to anything 
So once you kind of break down all of these details of the gecko, what you do is then you try to uh, synthesize the nature aspect of like its biologically created um, geometry and see how can I transform that in something that men could do with uh, synthetic materials, probably some electromagnetic activated rubber material with electrodes inside that can shift shapes, whatever. So just to even include all those kinds of tech that I just mentioned, that means you have to do research on those elements too. So ultimately you need to have like a vast source, a vast box of knowledge in your brain where you can, this is your like your mental toolbox and you can, there's a lot of shit in there and you, you wanna grab as much as possible to create like something new. And the more you have at your disposal, the better your problem solving capability will be, the, the better your designs will be, the more detailed they'll be, the more believable they'll be. So first of all, the design is the most important. Next is like your, your mastery skills, your technical skills. So technical skills mastery. Uh, this is also important to actually communicate what you have in your head in a proper way. So you have people who are great designers and shitty, and they have shitty skills. You also have great designers who have also great skills. And you have shitty designers who don't have skills. Don't have skills. So it's all a problem, except for this one. Because you don't want to be like the guy who has a brilliant idea but doesn't know how to communicate it properly. You also don't want to be someone who doesn't have any idea how to design, but you know every button in Maya or Blender. No one gives a shit, you know? What people care about is that you have a good idea that is properly thought out, that has actual value, who can then transform it into something that looks beautiful, that people can understand, that people get excited about, um, that people will potentially want to buy. And that is how you create uh, successful designs as a designer, in my opinion. So that is a little bit what I wanted to communicate. And I think lastly, what, what is on the list is forming a niche and, exp and you know, expertise. So I guess it kind of naturally flowed into that point by my rant. And I hope you guys don't mind. And what is important is obviously you cannot know, you, don't, you cannot have knowledge of the whole world. It's impossible. So what I, what I highly suggest is if you have areas of interest, take those interests, go like balls deep into those subjects, and then become expert in that particular little group of topics. become expert once you become the expert and there's only like 20 to 50 people in in the world or like in the industry that also offer that kind of expertise the competition pool isn't too big you know because there's a lot of comp there's a lot of companies you need people so you don't have to be worried about that but basically if if there's like thousands who can do what you do you need to expertise a little more you need to go a bit narrower in a field where there isn't as much competition so it goes like so it goes like sub thousand um so you can have like an actual chance numbers wise to find your work and provide clients with valuable designs and products so that is what i highly would I would highly suggest and i hope that it kind of made sense um because I, I i know that i've been rambling very fast and uh, very long about certain things but this is basically my thoughts on how to establish a, a sort of presence and actually produce quality that is meaningful, but is also meaningful to you as, as an individual, because this is a perfect way to establish um, uh, quality um, in whatever topic that you're trying to endeavor in, in your life. I hope you guys found it somewhat helpful. Hopefully you guys could understand what my points were. If you like this type of video, and if you think this provided you some good insight, please uh, leave a like and subscribe for more. Yeah, and if you are interested in my uh, mentorship or my design services, you can vis uh, visit my website. It'll be first link in the description. It's aidengarazio.com. I want to thank you for listening, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.